to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. So a few brief announcements. Number one, the dates have been announced for the 2018 Afterlife Symposium in Scottsdale, Arizona. They will be September 14th through 16th, 2018. And there's a brand new website to find out more, afterlifesymposium.org. Second, I'm heading back to Banyan Retreat Center in the UK for their very special Voices of the Past workshop. Last year when I went around Thanksgiving, it was miraculous, mind-blowing, and I, I, I tell you, I witnessed the miraculous. I had spoken about it in episode 149 about this uh, physical mediumship, it's called, and I'm super excited that when I get home, I'll tell you everything that happened. And last but not least is my book, We Don't Die, finally, after two years, is now available on audiobook. And you've heard heard me talk about it for a long time, but it's finally ready. Just two days ago, it went for sale on Amazon, audible.com, and it's soon to be on iTunes. So if you go to Amazon and just type in We Don't Die, you'll see a picture of my book, and then you can see the purchasing options for audiobook. It's 10 hours long, so I think you like listening to me by now, but I think you'll really enjoy it. Sells for around 20 US dollars, and all proceeds go to support this radio show. So you can feel good purchasing it, knowing that it goes to keeping these episodes going. And if you know Dr. Bernie Siegel, who wrote many, many books, he's a best-selling author, he wrote the foreword and he was kind enough to actually read the foreword. So you have oh, seven or eight minutes of him um, and then the rest me sharing my book. So I'm very excited and I think you'll love it. Now on to our show. It's a really great one, especially if you have or if you've had pets. Our guest today is Brent Atwater, and she is an internationally renowned medical intuitive, the animal medium, and authority on afterlife signs, life after death, and pet reincarnation. She's also a speaker. She has a YouTube TV series, and she's a radio show host. She is the author of many books and has a worldwide Facebook group all about pets in the afterlife and supporting those of you who are grieving the loss of a pet. And for over 20 years, Brent has positively transformed and uplifted the lives of countless individuals and their beloved animal companions. You'll really enjoy checking out her website, which is brentatwater.com. So without further ado, a warm, playful, loving Brent Atwater. Welcome to We Don't Die Radio. It is no problem. I spent some time with you, well, your TV show uh, this morning, and I thought, oh, I'm going to really dig talking to this lady. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Somebody I'm, says she's been channeling too long. Oh no, it's just just great. But you've got a, you've got a great story, and like I think many of us, um, you know, there's some heartache that happens along the way. But if you wouldn't mind, Brent, maybe just talk a little bit because I know, uh, yeah, like how did you get into this world? I believe something happened in childhood, correct? Uh, I came via my mom. No, um, <laughs> you mean when I started in life finding this out? Yeah, in the world of the uh, yeah afterlife and well, ESP and they put they put together a group. They being uh, Governor Terry Sanford put together the first gifted group of children to start his pilot study for gifted classes that is now used all over the um, country. And with that group, they decided they were going to experiment a bunch. And when they did, Dr. J. B. Ryan from Duke University came over and they tested the children to see if they had ESP. And we loved it because the men in the white coats put the stickies on our heads and let us play games all day long would come test us. And so back then, and this is going to tell you how old I am, you could be in that grade at age five. And they determined that I could receive and send energy and see it. And it's like, well, whatever. And, you know, at first grade, you don't care. It doesn't matter. And in second grade, it doesn't matter at all. Um, So 
we moved along and we stayed in that group. And I never knew that I was in the same hospital, you know, the same group through high school until after I got out of, and went to college. And somebody said, oh, wow, I did this and this. And I said, I never did. I always went with the same people from the first grade through the 12th grade. And they looked at me real strange. And then I realized, hmm, there was a little something different there. And they taught us how to turn off the voices in our heads and to um, learn to listen to the voices in our heads. And I just thought all that was normal. So when I got out, I just marched along thinking, OK, uh, me and my friends, which are the voices in my head, would just go have a life. And when I was young, my mother said I would play with imaginary friends and pets. And she would always say, isn't that cute? And I'm thinking, whatever. And I just keep playing. So fast forward all of this. In 1997, I had met a gentleman that I decided that was my best friend, most wonderfulest forever I could trust. And um, at 930 on a Friday night, he called and he said, I'll be there. And he was killed in a car crash. And that took my soul and exploded it, splattered it. I don't even know where my soul went, but that activated every gift that I had and everything that I had to tuck down in my life, like my intuition and everything like that. It just, I used it. I didn't know that didn't, everybody didn't have it. And I lived by it. But after Mike was killed, I could see inside people's bodies and I could hear spirits and see them. And it was like, OMG. So I went back to Duke. And I went in to see the uh, Integrated Medical Center, which was Dr. Larry Burke. And he said to me, he was teaching a class in radiology. And he said, um, come over here a minute. And I went, OK. And he said, you see all these x-rays up on the um, top of the, the boards here? And I went, yeah. And he said, tell me what you think. And I said, well, well, this one has an infection and this one has cancer that's going to metastasize in three months. And this one has um, a virus and this one has metabolic problems. And he says, how do you know that? I said, my voice is in my head. Tell me. And he looked at me and he went, wow. what? And I said, my voice is in my head. Tell me. And he went, really? And um, so he tried to change the x-rays and they wouldn't change. The machine wouldn't work. And he said, Let's, it, he said, I've been here 11 years. This thing has never changed for 17 years. I don't remember today. And he said, it always changes. And I said, excuse me, why are you doing that? Can I go to the bathroom? And he said, sure. So I ran out, went to the bathroom. And the minute I ran out, all the x-rays came back up. And then when I came back in, the x-rays went back down. And he said, do me a favor, step outside. So I stepped outside and the x-rays came up. And then he said, step back in. And the x-rays came back down. He put his arm around me. And he said, this is an example of energy out of control. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I was so, you know, I just was, <laughs> duh, embarrassed because here were all these like residents, doctor, young doctor residents there looking at me and laughing at me. And I just was going, oh, no. And he said, come on, Brent. And he gave me a bunch of books to read. And so that sort of started everything. Wow. So when you said earlier that you, you look at somebody, you can see inside them. It's like seeing their yeah. organs or, or knowing yep. what's wrong with them or. All yeah, right. I can see their organs and their, you know, their blood vessels and their oxygen and their lungs and their intestines and all that stuff. Yeah, wow. did that for did that for about ooh, 10 years or whatever. And then I was still searching for Mike because when Mike had died, I had never seen a dead person. And I thought dead was dead and done. Right. But something inside of me reared up. And if I cry, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and I walked in and I looked at his body laid up there because I'd never seen a dead person because my mom was Southern and Southern country club girls don't go to funerals and get upset. So I went in and there was Mike laid up on the slab and I pulled up in his eyes and I looked at him in his eyes and I said, hmm, you're tired. And they had him covered from the chest down because the steering wheel had gone through his chest. And um, I held his hands. And I said, I don't know where you've gone, but you're not leaving me. You're my best friend. And you're not checking out on me this way. I'm coming to find you. And little did I know that that is what would be the rest of my life. And so everything just started evolving. 
And um, I started seeing, okay, how can he come back? Okay, the theory of reincarnation. So I started studying that and I, you know, started a website and I wrote books on reincarnation and all this. And during this time, this little dog came to me right now. He has a V on his bottom. And that was about 10 years ago. And the V exactly matched my signature. And as I was walking down the hall, I about tripped over him. And I said, my God, why is this dog here? And my guides quietly said, look at his rear end. Do you think it's a message or anything? And I went, hey, man, it looks like a bee on his bottom. And they said, you think you can do something with this? And I went, huh, wonder if he's reincarnated. And so that start me, started me because there were a lot of mediums around and they were talking to people. Mm-hmm. Well, Mike had taught me how to talk to him. And I'm going to digress here. For those who believe people don't die, I agree. But I came from a Southern background where you don't talk about that. Oh, no, 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 no. Ghost taints. You don't go there. It is wrong. Well, I didn't care what that background said. I was going to find Mike. Mm -hmm. And so I was sitting and crying one day, just just crazy crying. About seven years because I'm a slow learner. And I said, Mike, where are you? Come to me. I know you're here. And he said to me very quietly, if you quit grieving, I'll show you how to connect and contact and communicate with me. And I went, what? He, I said, you're dead. He said, if you'll keep quiet, I'll show you how to contact and connect with me. I said, you're dead. I'm a slow learner. He said, listen to, if you'll be quiet, I'll teach you. And I went, will anybody know? And he went, I don't know. And I went, okay, let's try. So we started. And I could see him and I could feel him and I could touch him and I could talk to him. It was just like he was there in steam form or translucent, you know, cloudy look. And it was like, whoa. You could see him? I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Like I looking see right at his face? Yeah. It's like looking at a see-through version of the spirit. Okay. Oh, wow. It, it's just like translucent see-through it. And so that was pretty cool. And so meanwhile. I say so. Yes. Well, but I mean, you see, I wasn't telling anybody this. No. And so people were asking me about being a medical intuitive. So they were all coming to me and I was looking inside their bodies because looking inside a body, okay, I can see the heart and I can see that it's blocked and I can see the cancer and I can see in the future. So I know your cancer is going to metastasize in six months on your left hip. And so I was concentrating my seeing the energy because everything is energy mm-hmm. into bodies in inside the interior of your body and so I didn't think anything about it and then somebody said to me it was one of my friends and they said hey you can see Mike and you can see inside bodies can you see dead pets and I went I don't know and they said what do you mean you don't know I said never tried I never veer out of my lane I sort of like stay in there where my lane mm-hmm. and they said well why don't you try it and I went uh, you mean call up dead fluffy? And they said, yeah, call up dead fluffy. And I went, you got a dead fluffy? And they said, sure. And I went, all right, let's just see. So I said, don't give me any information here. Tell me about your pet. And they said, okay. And I said, let's see if I can call them up. So I called them a name and I called and I said, well, let me tell you what's standing in front of me. And I described the pet and she said, that's my dog. And I went, really? He's pretty cool looking. And she said, do you have anything to say to me? I said, how do I know? And she said, well, ask him. And I went, you want me to ask your dead dog something? And she said, yes. And I went, well, sure, why not? I said, you going to tell anybody? And she said, no. And I went, okay. Um, so it's so said, funny how, because I did a lot of my stuff with, I couldn't tell anybody. Because people would think I'm insane. But you still ventured out and went for it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So, yeah, like you, I just said. Hey, Fluffy, except I use his name. Talk to me. What do you want to tell me? Well, that started the conversation. And so I have always, even when I did this radio show, I always say, dear God, please give me the words to benefit those I came to serve. Because I promised Mike, if he had to die to ignite my gift, that I would do something to honor him every day. And that would be to let people who think that they're dead, 
to let them know that they're not. Because so many people grieve just because they don't know better. Mm -hmm. And I wake up every day and like you, it's my purpose to prove, and I've been researching for 21 years and talking to spirits for 21 years, to prove that they're alive and well and in spirit form and you're just on a new journey. And I promise that to Mike and I will keep that promise until the universe tells me I'm not to serve anymore. And so there were so many mediums out there that I decided that I would just keep me and Mikey special. Now, I have some friends that if they get in trouble, I'll talk to their people on the other side. But I really prefer to keep my Mikey with me. And so I just talk to basically spirits um, of pets because so many people have never even heard of the fact that pets are alive and well. Now, they can talk to animal communicators, which do telepathic impressions of thoughts. But I see dead pets just like I see deceased people. And so once again, I've just said, God, send me the people that I came to serve. And so for 21 years now, um, I have evolved. And for the past, wow, uh, gosh, I guess 20 years I've been talking to spirits and then edging toward the pets. And now over 10 years, um, I see and talk to dead pets. And it really surprises me that people really, it's interesting because pets are so intimate. They're more intimate than people. Yes. That people, um, you know, they are comfortable in believing, okay, they've gone to Rainbow Bridge, they're dead, I'll die, and then we'll meet each other. That's not the way it works at all. I mean, I talk to them while they're having the euthanasia needle put in their arm to help them transition, while they're transitioning, and when they get to the other side. So they're chatty Kathy the whole way. And it's really upset a lot of people's boats to hear this mm -hmm. because they don't want to go there. And so God says, OK, Zena, keep going. So Zena, the warrior queen, keeps marching on and going, hello, pets are alive and well on the other side. And now, since I've been thrown out of every pet loss group there is, um, <laughs> we have we have one of our own with about yeah, let's say I think this morning we had over fifty three thousand in there from all over the world, and um, people are coming to talk about really and truly my pet's alive and well on the other side. So I say yes, and because I think it's just as important because there's so many people. And if I'm boring you, please let me know. Oh, I, I'm um, not. Yeah, no, I got some questions though, so I want to back up a little right. bit. And then go All right, I'm forward. almost through here, and, yeah, I no. say, and I say to them, you know, and I mentioned this to you, if people in nursing homes would understand that spirits are with them always, you wouldn't have to be alone anymore. You could be talking to people that were on the other side. You could have your pets sitting in your lap or being around you. And I know that probably when I go in the home, you know, they're going to be saying, oh, look at her. Let's put her over in the corner. Who's she talking to? Well, I'll be talking to all my little buddies that I brought to the home with me. Um, so I think that because the pets are critical to individuals that don't have family, don't have a support network, don't have friends, they become even more sacred than sometimes human connections. And I think trying to upchange this concept that they die and you get to die and join a rainbow bridge because that's just a poem um, is something that I'm trying to create a great upheaval in. So people will cry less and be happy more by having fluffy visit them and feel them and see them and connect with them. Wow. I like the rainbow bridge yet. I add to it that they're still around, you know, that, just, yeah. that they're healthy. They're well, you just can't see them with your eyes. But there's still Some people around. can. I'm trying to teach them how. Can't you can teach that? Yeah, in my books, I've got I've got lessons on how to communicate with them and feel them, touch them, see them, and talk to them. Because I believe in the privacy of your own home, you should be able to do that. Yes. And so that's why I sort of went out on a limb and I've put it in my books, and um, I've got a new book coming up called Lessons from Loved Ones. It'll probably be out next week and um 
It tells how to touch, see, feel, and connect people and pets on the other side. Brent, that's and how terrific. to communicate with them. Terrific. And so I want them to be able to know they're not dead. We don't die. Wow. This is taking it one step further because, you know, it's great to hear they're around and all that, but to everybody's looking for those signs. Everybody's looking for how do I do it? What do I need to do? Um, let me just ask you, when Mike first came to you and you said you could, he touched you, what did that feel like? It feels like a, either a one or two or three things. It can feel like fat air messing on you, pressing against you. It can feel cold and tingly. Or it can feel like someone's blowing on you. Mike would always feel like a uh, sort of a warm tingly. And, you know, you can you can feel them kiss you. Um, I teach people with their pets how to have the pet put their paw in their hand and then how to feel the edges of the pet and be able to pat them and feel their fur and how to feel them jump up on you and sit in your lap. And um, I think that that's critical in changing the beliefs of they don't die is teaching people how to do it with their pet. And um, I just have a real strong conviction to that. Mm -hmm. And I've beyond my own comfort level, but not really in this lessons from loved ones in teaching people that they can do that with pets and humans. And I want them to try because most of the people that try Three quarters of them can do it. And in time, if they let go of the speed bump in their mind of, I can't do this, they can do it. And once you touch the other side and once you feel your beloved, be it a person or a pet, your life is forever changed. And they're followers of your show for then and ever and always. And when they see they don't die, you'll have cheering crowds going, Yay! Yay! Go, Sandra! Uh huh. You're right. Yo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're a funny woman. <laughs> wow. Well, wow! 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 No, no, it's so important. People, I don't remember exactly the details of how many, but there's more grief over the loss of pets than any other kind of grief because I think you know, there's a lot of us single people around. We have pets. You know, a lot of us have never been married. We, we got pets. Um, you know, lots don't have children. We have pets, you know, so, and that bond that we have with our pets, you know, I know that I have had two kitty cats that are now, uh, they have spirits. They transition to spirits, transition to spirits. Um, but they were closer to my heart than any human being has ever gotten. So, that grief is tremendously painful. Well, the one thing that we try to talk about is it's the the whole premise is the premise of physics. And I ask my guides, how in the world do I explain this to anybody? And my God says, it's pretty easy. And I went, all right, boys, you tell me. Pretty easy. physics." So they said, if you take water and you boil it, what do you get? Steam. If you take steam and freeze it, what do you get? Ice. If you get ice and melt it, what do you get? Water. Okay. So we always say that your pet just goes to steam form. Can you see steam? Nope. Does it change? Nope. A human body is made up of, I think they said, uh, 75% water, a, a pet's Body, a cat's body is 65% water and a dog's, according to the ASPCA, is 70% water. So if you take the theory of water to steam, steam to ice, ice back to water, it shows that energetically energy never dies. It just changes forms. And water is the perfect example of the energy of water never dies. It just changes forms. So what happens with a body is the soul which is lives on earth lives inside your earth suit okay so then when you get ready to die which is not the truth that's not a factual word you only discard and shed your earth suit the earth suit is what dies of a life energy being inside of it and then you transition 
over the death line. And once you transition to the other side, that same soul energy is now called spirit energy on the other side. It's just as living as the water that was boiling becomes steam and your earth suit that you discarded transitions into spirit energy. So now you got a whole new journey to go on. So I tell everybody, don't say you put your pet down. You can't put down a living spirit. Don't say you euthanized. You help them transition. So it's about transition of a soul, which is the name of it in the earth suit, to living energy, which is called spirit on the other side. And in between is nothing but transition. There is no word death. I love that. Dead and discard dead the earth and suit. Earth. You just discard your earth suit. Transition over and the death there. line. <laughs> yep. And the death line, because I watch this, the death line is an electromagnetic void area. And that's where you transition to the other side. When a body is leaving, be it human or pet, you can watch the energy and hospice workers can see this sometimes. Mm -hmm. You can see the energy drop inside the body. It goes in a counterclockwise direction as it draws up through the shoulders and then leaves. It goes for a blip, a blip. And that's over the death line. That's so it changes from earth energy to spirit energy. It's like a blip where the electromagnetics transition. And then it goes on into forever as a spirit. Now, it may decide to come back in a new fur suit or earth suit. That's reincarnation. But, you know, the only 30 to 40 percent do that. And the rest of them are right there hanging out with you forever. And you can talk to them and see them and feel them and touch them. I don't care how long they've been gone. I mean, Mike and I talk all the time. He's been gone 21 years. He's like Chatty Cathy. I go to the loo. He's sitting there. Let's talk, honey. I'm on the loo. Can you wait? Um, so, yeah. Hmm. They don't die forever with you. And you just need to learn how to craft your words and your protection prayer. So you call them up and talk to them. Sit down, talk to them. And everybody goes, I don't know if I want to do that. Do Why wouldn't you want to? You can straighten out every thing you ever wanted to ask. And they're sitting there wanting to do it. Can you give us some steps how to do it? I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm dying to buy your book because that's the wrong word because there is no death. You're transitioning. But I can't wait to read it when it comes out. And You're transitioning. Soon, hey, as soon as it comes out, Brent, send me the link because what I will do is I'll attach it to this episode for our listener today. Uh, if you're well, it'll probably be Saturday. If no, I got to yeah. edit it one more time and then Saturday or okay. Sunday hear that. <laughs> All right. So you who's listening right now, you the listener, um, if you see this episode on YouTube, just beneath it in the description, I will have, if I don't already, a link to Brent's book. But until then, I, I think, you know, Sandra, I think that's the difference in in my books and other books, because I want to be the one that teaches them how, because I can do that. Yeah, you do. what You do what you do best. And then I can make this other stuff simple so they can get it. I mean, like my mother's 84 year old book club could do this stuff. So that's what I'm trying to do is to put it so you can be crying your heart out and sitting in your own bedroom and do it. And somebody said, well, Brent, you don't have a lot of reviews on your book. And I went, well, you're right. And they said, why? And I went, because everybody's so busy connecting with their pet and touching them and feeling them and talking them and seeing them. They don't have to, time to write a review. No, people, Duh. yeah, I, I, I've read a ton of good books and unfortunately I don't take the time to write reviews yeah. unless somebody asks me, then I'll be like, yeah, all right. Brent, yeah. could you give and us. And if you're there trying to, trying to, to touch fluffy, guess which is more important. Yeah. Touch and fluff. Could you so, give us some of, some of the steps until we get the book? Because I'm, I'm a firm believer because I know I have been on uh, many, many, many interviews. And when I tell people, oh, you got to wait for the book, it, it turns off listeners. But when you give freely, and you don't have to give everything, but just give us a, a few little appetizers of something we could do now until we get the book in our hands. Okay, well, let me say something about that, if I may. Yes, ma'am. The giving freely. The giving freely part is where my heart is. And that's why somebody said, Brent, you got to start a YouTube thing. And yes. I went, what? And they said a YouTube thing. And I said, that's for cool folks. I said, I don't you know how to do that stuff. Out. Yes, you did. Yep. 
so a year ago I started that and I I that's where I answer the questions in my group. That's where I answer when people send me questions from my website. And that's where I um, if somebody's got a question about the book or do so, I try very, 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 very hard to provide tons of free resources so that people can do this themselves. Oh, good. And good, good, good. I don't mind doing that at all. That to me is, I guess you would say what I'm about. Me too. Because um, I believe in my soul that that matters. Yes, you know? it does. Yes, it does. You have no idea. Yeah, I met a man in Arizona who looked me right in the mm-hmm. eye and he was suffering terrible grief and literally on the verge of suicide. And he had said to me, I, I Googled the word grief and your show popped up on YouTube. And he said, I listened to every episode and you saved my life. You never know. So giving freely, that's, and I don't ask and a that's dime. What people say, I yeah. honor you for doing that. And see, I'm doing that for the pet and animal world. Mm-hmm. So if you're ever out there and they need a pet or animal person, call me. Um, and that's what I do. I've had people um, say that they're they just keep watching, and I don't know what the cool word is. Is it binge my? Uh, yeah, binge watching. The, binge watching. That's it. Yeah, they do that with my YouTube videos because it helps them understand that Fluffy's not dead. Because I'm real strong about it. I'm not shy about any of this. <laughs> so, I couldn't tell. <laughs> and and I and I dress up in these funny costumes, and everybody goes, Brent, why do you look like that? And sometimes I ask myself, and I said, because if for a split second I can make them smile, yes, while they're in pain, then I don't care if I look silly, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and but if you- it gets the YouTube huh? all, on YouTube, people can just type in Brent Atwater and your channel comes up. Yep. Simple, simple. And I scrolled through some of your episodes and you are wearing some crazy stuff, but it makes me want to watch them as well. And they're not long. So you're not investing hours of your time. They're just a few minutes, right? Yeah. I just answer a quick question and move along. And mm-hmm. I have today, I have not worn the same outfit in any 300 episodes. It's It's got to be a game now. So we, oh we have gosh, to come up. Gotta... I'm on the constant watch of, oh, my God, what can I wear for this? I've already got my Grinch outfit for Christmas. And I've got my bunny outfit um, for next year's uh, Easter. And so I'm on the constant watch for these outfits that you go, what the is she wearing? And then you listen to the message. You know? So um, it takes, I think the longest one, maybe about five minutes at most, but um, easily digestible. I want to back up just a little bit. You had gone to law, right. law school, correct? Back yep, in the, I did. Back in the day. And mm-hmm. you founded a charitable trust, correct? To benefit yep. children. Yep. Yep. So you I did. did some pretty extraordinary things. And I wanted to ask when you started getting involved with this medical intuition, you say you did it for 10 years. What did you do? Could you diagnose people and then they'd go to the doctor? I mean, like how was it used? How, how did you use it? Be, and was there like healing involved in this too, that you have? Yes. Um, yes, I did. Uh, that. Um, I did the, I started off with the, I had people just coming to me, asking me what was wrong. And I could look inside their body and I would tell them and I would literally diagnose them. And everybody says, well, you can't diagnose anybody. That's illegal. And I went, well, I'm sorry, I am. And so I, you know, my father was a lawyer. And so we wrote up this disclaimer, which protected me. And I would look at CAT scans and I look at CAT scans and MRIs and everything. And I can tell them what I see. And then they would compare what I would see inside their body because I would do a scan from their head to their foot. And um, I would tell them where to find things. And my guides would give me medical terms. And I would say, write this medical term down and ask your doctor about it. So they would take the information to the doctor. Um, I recently had a friend who's going through chemotherapy. And she she said, oh, I've got to take this chemotherapy. I said, you can't take it. And she said, I'm going to take it. The doctor told me, I said, you won't be able to take this thing. He's going to stop you after three days. And she said, oh, come on, Brent. Are you doing your thing? And I said, yeah, I'm doing my thing. I said, don't do that. So the bottom line is she wasn't able to take the chemotherapy and it, you know, sort of wrecked her body and they had to take her off of it. So I give diagnostic solutions that are intuitive and then they can take those diagnostic solutions. And I also do this with pets. And one of the things I do that I find fascinating 
in the readings that I do for deceased pets, transition the word, um, I look inside the body and I can tell the people why the pet died. Because a lot of people don't know why Fluffy died. Okay, he had cancer, but he died on this day. Why did he die on that day? Well, he threw a clot and it went to his brain or he had pulmonary embolism or, okay, his, you know, intestines the, was went septic. And so one of the part, things that I do in the reading is I use my medical intuitive ability to look inside a pet's guts, if that's the word, and it's not so lovely, but um, to tell them why they died. This woman had this gorgeous um, golden retriever. And she went into Hardy's to get a drink, came out for the Coke and the golden retriever was dead as a doornail. And we came back and they were crazy over him. And she said, what happened? And the little dog threw a brain aneurysm and just died immediately. And a lot of people worry about, did the pet hurt or suffer during the process of death? Yes. And I, I can look inside the body and say, uh, no. And I can tell them whether they're in pain or not or weren't in pain. And some of them I've said, well, they've been in minimum pain or they had already their spirit had already left their body before you helped them transition. And most of the time, the pets are sitting outside the body going, you know, I wish they wouldn't get so upset about this, you know, and they the pets walking with them on the way home. So um, that provides a lot of relief in helping people by looking inside a pet's body in knowing what factually occurred during the time and process of transition. That helps me even with my dad's death because he was – drugged up in excruciating pain and it was the most horrendous suffering I saw before his medication was turned up enough that he transitioned and I would love (laughs) to believe that my dad was standing outside of his body not in it when that was all happening because that occurred to me when they leave now, you can see when they leave. So that's something to ask, you know, if you work with a medium or something and they can see, ask them if they can see him standing there. Because I can tell the person exactly when the pet's spirit transitions from the soul discarding its body. So, whoop, he's slipping out of his body now. What? Look at him slip out of it. Whoa, he's out of that nasty thing now. OK, they're alive and well on the other side. And you can watch him. I had this pet. He was cool. He literally he got to the death line. And he says. Eh, what's it like over there? I said, forest. He's fabulous. It's fabulous. Go on. Well, I don't know if I want to stay in a forest. Cross the death line. Well, I'm not sure about that. Forest. Your parents are saying, I see them watching me, he said. They're sitting there crying. I don't know if I want to do forest. Go over the death line, honey. Well, maybe I will and maybe I won't. So with that, it takes about five minutes. Forest transitions over to the other side. And he says, wow, this is cool. And I said, okay, Forrest, what? And he started doing loop-de-loops and whirlies because he was this spirit form that was a white, sparkly, transitional form, and he didn't have the weight of his body. Well, I'm sitting there laughing so hard I could cry. And the lady's sitting there. She said, what are you watching? I said, your pet is doing loop-de-loops and whirly gigs with his newfound sparkle suit. And she said, well, he always was special. And so we went on and on and on, and he was just an incredible spirit and um, just provided fabulous information. And the information they provide is very, very critically, and especially for someone like you, uh, Sandra, it would be extremely emotional because when you're that attached and connected to them, your pet gives you basically OMG information that um, to let you know that you're so part of the fiber of their being. Well, and it's, I had, it's, um, I, I just, I, you know, it's funny because my kitty, Millie, I can actually, like, I don't know if it's a memory or she's here, but like feel her fur. Oh, go for B. Go I'll, for I'll B. I'll go for B. <laughs> but she was next to my side uh, the whole time I was writing my book. Yep. And after she transitioned over the death line, which was awful that moment, my aunt and I brought her to the to the vet. She was very, very sick. But it was, I had to read my book one last time before it went to print. And we had just put Millie to sleep. And let's I, change those words. You can't put a spirit to sleep. You right. helped her transition. Okay. So I, we just helped Millie transition. And crying my eyes out and then the publisher said you have to read this one more time 
and I didn't want to read it. I mean, I was in heavy grief because I love, I tell you, I love Millie more than any human being. And after reading my own book, I felt such faith and comfort. Yep. And she yep. was my little gift to me. And she transitioned at the perfect time so that I knew how valuable the words were in that book to help a grieving soul. So I almost feel well, like that was, she, the, that was the that was the gift she gave you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, like you can you can sit. You said you can put your hand out, and I always uh, say a prayer, and it's a protection prayer because when you open a portal to the other side of energy, there's lots of folks on the other side who want to come and chat with you. And with pets, I mean, you open the door, and it's like. <laughs> Okay, how many of you want to talk? So you have to be very specific in when you ask someone in. So you can say, um, I ask the energy formerly known as Millie. Okay, I ask the energy formerly known as Millie. Oh, I love my Millie. Yeah. To put your paw in my, are you right or left-handed? Right-handed. Okay, so if you're right-handed, that is the hand you write with. So that is your sending hand. If you have a sending hand then the other is your receiving hand yeah so if you write with your right hand then your left is your receiving hand so you would say i ask and it is my intent for the energy known as millie to put your paw in my left hand now i ask and it is my intent for the energy formerly known as millie to put your paw in my left hand now you say that three times and then you say, so be it, it is done. And then normally, and I can feel Harry Kitty putting her hand in mine because she lives in the office with me. Um, you will be able to feel a real little light tingling. And when you feel that, that means Millie's sitting there putting her paw in your hand. Then once you acknowledge and identify her energy, you can ask her to sit and you will be able to fit. She was a long haired cat, wasn't she? Uh, yeah, not short hair, not too long. Yeah, that's what she's not one of those like, t you know, slick cats. She was like medium. Yeah, and slick. so you, take your, and so you take your hand, and then you'll be able to feel the edge of her being, and then once you do that, you can say, "Okay, Millie, I ask you to jump up on the bed and lay down beside me." And a lot of times, by the time you get so you can identify their energy like that, and that's the quickest, fastest way to do it. Once you can identify their energy like that, then you have opened the door to starting to feel them. And a lot of people start being able to see them out of the corner of their eye like that. Now, not everybody's going to be able to see them. That's the hardest trick. But that's because their body can't hold the frequency that they need to to see it. But 98% of everybody can feel and touch their pet. And that's just a given. And I've got videos that show you how to do it. And so what people don't get is you can do the same with humans, because the way I learned this is that Mike taught me how to do it from the other side. I mean, you can feel you can ask Millie once you get her to get your paw, you can say, Millie, how about giving me a little kiss on the cheek and you'll feel her come up and get on your cheek. And you can feel if it were a man that just, you know, if you're a husband, you can say, kiss me now. And I can feel Mike kiss me. I can feel Mike lay down beside me and sleep at night. And my dog will get up off the bed and go lay down in his special bed when Mike comes in. Because you can see it, it's weird. He'll look up at the ceiling and he can see Mike come in and Mike will lay down and then a friend will go to the other side and lay on his bed. And so. I think that that's critical for people like you who have been pioneers and leaders in this. I think folks like me got to come behind you and say, okay, here's how you do it. Now she's proved it. Let me show you how to do it. And then together we march forward and help people stop crying. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah, Brent, I've taken a couple courses. One was on remote viewing, which is ESP kind of technique. And all of us said, mm -hmm. Well, we can't do it. We can't do it. And there's that voice always there saying we can't. As soon as we set that voice aside, I was yep. stunned. Every single person 
could see dimensions of things that were in a closed bag and a closed envelope. Right. Mind right. blowing. And then same thing. I've taken several courses on mediumship. The little voices right there. Can't do it. Other people can do it. Certainly not me. When we let that voice talk, doesn't work. Willing to play with it willing to go for it, guess what? All of a sudden, I'm telling people accurate information about their deceased loved ones. I yeah. think, because like every single person in that course on remote viewing could do it once we set the side, you know, set aside that little voice. Yeah. So I think with what you're training us to do now, the, the little voice might say, well, how, how do we know that's not just a memory of our pet? How do we know? Put aside that voice and be willing to play with it. And I think starting with, yeah, the animal world, if that's what you're looking for, great. Your loved ones that once walked the earth in flesh, bring it on. Cause I think this, you're really, you're really onto something, but that l- damn little voice in our mind that says, I can't do it. You know, my dad would always say, if you think you can or think you can't, you're right. You got to be willing to well, go for see, it. Well, I have a thing aside. in there. I I go just. I come from a different direction. I'm sort of folksy about stuff. And okay. the way I sit down and I say to them, "Look, because in the communica in this lessons from loved ones, I've really stepped out on the limb here. Um, is it? It says, well, you know, I can't talk to them. And I said in the book, I said, look, you have talked to them since the day they crossed over. You just haven't done it formally. So now we're going to do it with a little bit of mm-hmm. structure to it. And I said, you have talked to your pets since the day they left. Yeah. Well, now you just can talk to them the same way, but here's a little structure to it. And I always say, you know, they live in never, never time. They're in Neverland because they don't have time. So it takes about two weeks, unless you just write on rock on, um, to do it on demand. But Everybody can do it. Now, what bothers me is, you know, when they're hawking this stuff for marketing, they'll say, oh, everybody can talk to the animals. Well, I even wrote this in the book and it says, yeah, but everybody, everybody can't talk to all animals. And I think that's where people get discouraged. You can always talk to any spirit that you have a heart connection with because the energetic electromagnetic connection is already there. Mm -hmm. And once you learn to feel Millie's hand, Millie's hand, see, I'm, pets to me are people. Millie's paw in your hand, that same energy is the same energy you will feel when you are talking to her and touching her. It's the exact same energy. So the reason I start with the put the paw in the hand or put the hand in the hand is that's the same energy that you will feel when you're going to have a conversation with them. I'm coming from a different direction. I'm coming from the direction that everything is energy. Now, I'm teaching, you don't have to have that little voice, I can't, I can't, I can't, because you already have a life and years and days or however long you've connected with, you've already established an energetic electromagnetic connection. True. It's there. It's already there. So go on with Millie. Just now set it up so you're using a little bit more of your mind to do this. It's already there. The electromagnetic connection there. All you got to do is flip the switch. It's sort of like, remember, Lily Tomlin going, <laughs> hello, one ringy dingy, yes, two ringy yes, dingy. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, well, you're just going ringy dingy to Millie this time, and tomorrow you're going ringy dingy to Paul, and tomorrow you're going ringy ding to Mikey, and then ringy dingy to Fluffy. So you already have the connection, and that's where I'm going. You got it. Now just do it. Hmm. I'm having a I'm picture now doing this with my dad <laughs> sitting at a table or having him sit next to me on the couch and, and pulling up the memory of what, what he looked well, like. Somebody, and said, what do I do if I don't like <laughs> somebody says, what do I do if I don't like him? And I said, well, if you don't like him, I'd be, they'd be the first ones I'd call and pull up. So you could talk about it and decide, straighten your karma out, have some good discussions, get everything straightened out and move on. Because just because you, you know, spirits on the other side doesn't mean you have to like them. So there's also advantages to being able to discuss something and to work it out. Um, oh, a lot of people, when there's unresolved business. A that's lot it. Of people haven't spoken to their parents, their parents transition, yep. you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. And people think yep. it's too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. So I think it's that's, that's the key thing that I'm hoping that this will help people do because they've already got the connection. It's there. You were around them. It's there. 
So just flip a different switch. Can we talk a little bit about reincarnation of pets? Because no sooner Millie transitioned, I live with my aunt and uh, it was a little bit of a time, but we, of course, we were both grieving something terrible and uh, auntie found out that there was this kitty cat that needed a home. And Ooh. next thing you know, we got Harry into our house who's in, and he's into our heart, you know, and I'm not saying that Millie, you know, reincarnated to Harry, but they're definitely different, distinct personalities. But I hear many, many stories that people have animals that have so many similar traits as the one they did before. Well, the similar traits they had before can just be oversouling, where the spirit is telling the pet how to behave so oh. that it it pleases the owner. And that's just him sitting up in heaven. They've made a contract. They're talking one-on-one and going, hey, Bubba, don't go over there and jump up on the cabinet. She doesn't like that. But you can go over there and sit on the sofa. Or um, <laughs> they give them, say, you know, don't eat the cheese, but you can eat the hamburger. So they oversold them, and it appears as if they're acting like the other pet, right. and they're really not. And that's just intermittent. But when you reincarnate um, – 30 to 40 percent of pets do reincarnate. And it's really fascinating because you can watch. Well, I can watch it. Um, I watch the pet cross the death line. It becomes a sparkler form. And then you say to it, because you're now looking at future energy. So when you talk about your remote viewing, now you're remote viewing future energy. So I say to the pet, OK, show me what you're going to look like. And then the pet will, just like in the movies, the Transformers, that little sparkly white light will transform into the pet it is going to be. And you can describe the color, where it's going to find you, how it looks, what it, you know, what time of year, and when it's going to be there. And I've had real strong success with that. That's where I've made a lot of reputation, you know, good, good stuff on. And, um, but it always sort of freaks me out when about two or three years before the pet arrives, I'm describing this pet. And then three years later, I get to pet it. It's like, okay, I saw you in spirit. Mm -hmm. And then it's just the reverse. Instead of seeing dead in spirit, you see in spirit, then alive. And even though I've been doing this, so many years. It's just like that still is one thing sort of takes my breath away um, because they do reincarnate, but they don't reincarnate because, oh, we need to love some more. We need to do good. They only reincarnate to have more lessons with you. And the lessons are usually not always that much fun. Everybody says, oh, I want a reincarnated pet. Well, you got to watch it transition again. So a reincarnate is coming. They're coming to learn lessons. They're coming to usher you through lessons and they might not always be good. So everybody's jumping on the, Oh, I want you to reincarnate train. Better be thinking about, mm, you might not want to deal with those lessons that they're coming to help you with. So they but reincarnate all, with the same families, with the same owners. Yes. It's a contract that you make prior to coming to mm -hmm. earth one-on-one. -on -one. In other words, Millie would make that contract with just you. It's a one-on-one -on -one contract because it's a learning journey for a soul evolution of each of you. Which I'm thinking it goes hand in hand with people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. And there's, there's whole websites on walk-ins and reincarnated people. What do you mean by walk-ins? So, a walk-in is a soul that inhabits another soul's body. Um, for instance, a lot of times you'll have, and I've had several people in our group have uh, walk-in cats. Um, I, there are a lot of walk-in human beings around. Let's say a person has a major heart attack and they're in the hospital. And so he has what I call a contract with what we call the delivery body. A, another person comes in with a body and he has a heart attack and that heart attack allows for another soul to slip in and the person who had the heart attack says, well, I finished everything I needed to do prior to the heart attack. So I'm going to leave. And so another soul says, well, that's a perfectly good body down there. I'm going to inhabit it and go forward for the rest of its life in that earth suit. So a walk-in is a specific being that has contracted with a person on earth to take over the body after an event occurs 
so they can continue their journey and the initial body that was in the earth suit or soul that was in the earth suit can leave because they finished their journey. And you'll notice a lot of times you can see, well, I can see walk-ins because they have a different energy, but walk-ins um, usually the people will say, you know, Tom certainly was different after that heart attack. He just doesn't seem like the same person at all. And you're going, really? Mm-hmm. And maybe he isn't. Maybe he is a walk-in. So it's the same thing that they've discovered, you know, when they give a heart transplant, that the earth body assumes a lot of the characteristics of the person whose heart they transplanted into that earth suit. Yes, I have heard that. I love that study. And so that's part of the electromagnetics inhabiting the earth suit. So now they have the electromagnetics of a different heart in this earth suit, and the earth suit starts responding with the electromagnetics of the deceased heart. So that's just way cool. But again, it's all electromagnetics. Now, those that have reincarnated, this has always been a curious to me. Okay. Can people, whether they're people or animals, say they have yep. reincarnated, are you yep. as a medium still able to pick up on their energy and well, yeah. be able to read them I, as who they were? And yeah, I do past lives. I do past lives. I have the, I've been very, I'm able to do, I can see past life energy, present life energy, and future life energy, which allows me to tell you if Millie was with you before and if she's going to be with you again. I had a Jack Russell that I was talking to a man in Australia, and I said, she said, have I been with a Jack Russell before? And about that time, I said, let me look at the past energy. And I said, do you like baking? And he said, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. And I said, you have a girlfriend now? He said, yes. And I said, you've been with your girlfriend in a past life. And he said, how do you know that? I said, the Jack Russell is telling me she still has the same thick ankles in this life as she did in the past life. (laughs) The guy said, well, she does have thick ankles. And I said, you were a baker then and she was your wife. And he said, well, the minute I met her, we started dating and have never been apart ever since. And I went, "Uh uh-huh. So when you're doing a reading of a pet, you just simply ask it, show me your past life. And what it shows to me, it shows me like a video. And I see the pet in the past lives that is inhabited with the person that I'm doing the reading for. And then you do the current life, which is while they were on earth. And then the future life is you say, okay, show me if you're going to reincarnate. And then they will show you what they will look like in the future, just like the medical intuitive will show you the cancer where it metastasizes in the body in future energy. So I divide it into three different energies. I look at the past energy. I look at the present energy. And then I look at the future energy. And then you just read the electromagnetics of that energy and what you see. It's fun. It's like going into a theater. I just love it's fun. You never know what they're going to say. That's the bad part. The good part is you never know what they're going to say. I love it. (laughs) I just just love it. I can't imagine looking straight on on a, face uh, you know and being able to see or like you see that. the whole body you see, see the whole body. body yeah so in other words if millie were here millie would be laying down in front of me with her tail in front of me laying down and um she would be standing right there and then at the end of it they get up and they leave and you see them walk out just like you see a person walk out of the room and I all you always ask permission to talk to them that's critical because they're on the other side and it's just a matter of honoring their energy and so you say Millie, I'd like permission to talk to you. Hey, Millie, let's have a hot date tonight at 10 o'clock. So tonight you might say, hey, Millie, since we had the show today, hey, chick, let's come on down and talk about nine o'clock. Let me feel your palm in my hand. And that gives her a intuitive, energetic heads up of what's coming down because she's running around, you know, sort of hanging out, watching what's going on, but not asked to be here right now. And so when you ask her to put your paw in my hand now, put your paw in my hand now. It requires her energy to coagulate into a form that you can tactily feel. And you can. So you can do that after we finish. Hmm. It's it really, if you'd see me when we were talking about it, I had my left hand out, my right hand out, you know, and I was just feeling, you know how cats have uh, real fleshy, like the pads on their paws uh-huh. so i was feeling that and then her her fingernails and i thought her claws um yeah just very sweet i i haven't taken the time to really think of her in a long time so it's just 
really sweet. And um, I'm on my bed right now, and I just remember her, how she'd cuddle up with me. And it is very happy, uh, the experience I'm having right now. I, I think that it's, 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 it really honors your pet in another way when you allow them to be with you in a new journey in spirit form. Because if you're truly connected, she'll be with you the rest of your life till you draw your last breath. Mm -hmm. And why not enjoy her? Well, and I think the same thing with people. So many times people want to go to a medium and get proof that their loved one's right there. And I have this visual that there's the loved one always by their side, but, you know, and they, yep. they think they need to go somewhere else. No, you can practice talking right to them. And I like, even we could even say, just based on what you just said, you know, Pop, I'm here every evening, 8 o'clock. That's our, our date, you know, and, yep. you know, yep. it's just whatever however they you can do that. their energy yeah but kind of setting that you know there's a lot of people that have done the electronic voice phenomena and that's exactly what they do thursday night eight o'clock that's our date because you know that whatever the mechanics are of rearranging the molecules of energy on the other side you know they they could work on it and you know here we were Thursday, 8 o'clock. Well, that's the, and that's the key. You see, it's all electromagnetic energy. That's why they can monitor that. It's electromagnetic energy, so you can hear it, too. People say, well, what do they sound like? They sound like just like they did on Earth. Yeah. And, I mean, when I do people all over the globe and I do readings, and it's like, does the Japanese sound like Japanese? No, he talks to me in language just like we're talking today. And so the spirits know how to communicate with you you just gotta say do it and what i tell everybody is get over the speed bump of your mind it's yeah. your own speed bump right and i think that once they do that you just omg i just tell you it's like i don't feel like mike's gone at all because we're doing stuff together all the time i mean we're just busy all the time doing stuff and he's always putting his input in and saying this and doing that and it's like two or three and you can talk to him out loud all the time because everybody will think you just have an earbud in and you're on the phone and you can just be talking to your spirit while you're shopping oh that's so funny you know and everybody yeah. goes look at her she's on the phone no she's not she's talking to her spirit um so it's just something you can keep them in your life but you've been taught it's not possible mm -hmm. so they don't die and you can have fluffy and mike going with you mm -hmm. you know and we are all made up of energy, every yeah. single one of us. Everything we look at, it's all energy. You know, I think it's and the biggest see, illusion a, thinking we're real. Yeah, <laughs> and the most important part is to realize, and this is what's critical when you, you're learning how to touch them, see them, and feel them. Every person, you and me, have and has a specific electromagnetic energy pattern. OK, mm -hmm. just like a snowflake, every snowflake has a definite. Specific pattern, every human has a definite and pet has a definite electromagnetic pattern. It's called their bioprint. And that's what makes them identifiable. So that when you they do all these um, studies about is it an angel or is it a ghost? And they're doing these paranormal, they're using machines to measure the electronics. What they're really doing is measuring the electromagnetic energy of that being to determine is that the frequency of an angel? Is that the frequency of a ghost? And when you ask Millie to put your hand your hand out in her paw in your hand, you are feeling her electromagnetic signature so that when Millie comes in, you can feel Millie's electromagnetic signature. Tomorrow, you'll ask Pop to put his hand in your hand. Then you will feel, sense, and learn to identify his electromagnetic specific signature. Ah, and gotcha. that's the way when, when you're, when you're stand there as a medium, you can feel who's coming up to you like, oh, Mike's walking up on the left. My Labrador is coming up on the right. And you'll learn to sense their energy imprint. And that's what allows you to tell which spirit you're dealing with. Although you want to specifically call them out by name so that you only get that spirit. And once you determine that, that's why all these ghost hunt hunters and busters and paranormal everythings are there just measuring electromagnetic 
energy patterns, whether it's on a machine or on a television or the white noise and all that. It's a pattern. And that pattern determines who it is or what it is. And so when you learn to feel that pattern in your hand or with your hands, then you'll be able to know whether it's Millie or Pops standing in front of you. Yeah, or if it's sense. Aunt Molly or Ted or John, you right, know? Right, right. It, it makes that's perfect sense. Perfect. Everybody's got like their own fingerprint. So it's just, exactly. And I think too, and correct me if I'm wrong, we can't be busy in our own mind thinking of a thousand different things while doing this. Got to be in the present moment, wouldn't you say? Because I, I think that you have to, when you've never done this, mm-hmm. I think you have to focus on feeling the energy. That's yes. the way I know how to say it. Because the minute you can, look, if Millie puts her paw in your hand, then she's available for a conversation. Mm-hmm. But if I'm too busy checking my email and the, I got to f- listen to music and all these other things going on, I might miss it. So I in the beginning, yeah. in the beginning, okay. Because once you get a once you get attuned to her, you got Millie's in the room. It's like not now. It's like okay, Mike's over my right shoulder. Leave me alone. I'm busy doing this. Or you just get so used to feeling it that you can be doing all of that and know when she comes and goes. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, that's what's important is once you can feel and identify that special imprint of who they are, Mm -hmm. then you can do whatever you want to do and you'll know when she's in the room. It doesn't matter after a while. Now, has Mike told you? you... Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. I was just thinking, I, I get this visual of Mike being with you. But now, is he learning or is his soul continuing to grow where he is and he's also with you? You know what I'm getting at? Or? No, he's more. Like, he's he's sort of handling me. I'm enough to handle. Um, I this is my last incarnation, and that was his last. Okay. So he's um he's sort of helping me deal with what I've got to do, my little job on Earth, and um keeping me on the right path, because my guides say I can be real obstreperous, and um they say, and I said, well, y'all can too. So we just back and forth all the time to make sure they straight pass. <laughs> so he's working in a sense. He's right there by your side. This is just incredible. I'm very interested in checking out some of your videos on your your TV show on YouTube. And, and here's the deal. You got a lot of radio show episodes too. You know, Sandra, the minute you can touch Millie, you're good to go from then on. Because once you activate that ability, it's good for the rest of your life. Oh, that's perfect. Like riding a bike. It won't leave me. Yeah, so you can pop, talk to mom, you can talk to pop, you can talk to Aunt Midge, you can talk to Sarah, you can talk to anything and everybody you want. You just got to be specific in who it is. You have to identify their energy and then you're on go. Mm-hmm. It's not shut off. Brent, do you have a favorite memory of reuniting somebody with their pet that you can think of? I always like to hear yeah. a story. Oh, well, reuniting or what? a story of what they said. Yeah, how about that? Okay, the most, the one that blew me out of my chair after Mm -hmm. 20 years of doing this, the lady says, what does my cat want to tell me before we close? Cat said, really? And I'm going, oh, no. And she said, yes, what does he want to tell me before I close? Cat said, I like your lover better than our husband. Uh Huh? And the lady said, pardon? And the cat said, I like your lover better than our husband. And the lady says, anybody going to know about this? And I went, no. And I said, but can I use it as an example? It's so unique. And she said, as long as nobody will know who it is, you sure can. But oh, my God. And so um, they tell stuff like that that is just only you would know that is so out there, that is so personal to you that I usually know my clients extremely well after the readings. Sure. And uh, that's why confidentiality is the cornerstone because I believe that I believe that I am the steward of a gift that I am held highly accountable to and I feel great responsibility and I'm humbled by the fact to deliver the profound things they say. Because when you do that, 
And if I were to deliver something from Millie, which I haven't asked her if I could talk to her or haven't prepared for that, I would say, you know, something that would be in the farthest corner of your heart that nobody but she knew that you whispered in her ear. Mm -hmm. And when you do things like that, it makes someone realize that Millie can't be dead if she could tell you that. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is the greatest joy and it what makes me wake up every morning and keep going. Oh, that's so beautiful. Now, our cats that are still have not, they're still in their earth suit or animals. Yeah. It's more than it's just pet fluffy. I mean, this is a little being that has intelligence, correct? Personality. Yep. And I think yep. it could really build, you could build your relationship with that pet that you have that is still walking on planet Earth, that they are so much more than just their paws and hooves and hair. And Well, what I tell everybody is you make a, make a deal with your pet. Don't be talking to an animal communicator or medium after you leave. I don't want them knowing my secrets. <laughs> That's pretty funny. You know, it's sort of like, okay. So I've talked to my dog. He's not talking to anybody. Um, and... You know, you might want to chat with Millie about that. Um, so I think that when you realize how really ongoing connected you are, and they don't, I mean, they talk about toenail polish and they talk about lingerie and they talk about get rid of so and so. They're siphoning off of you and they drink too much and they're sloppy and they need to cut their toenails. And they have an opinion on absolutely everything that you think, I didn't know they were watching that. Well, yeah. And um, when they have the opportunity to tell it from the other side, they do. <laughs> so. Wow. Well, Brent, can people get in touch with you if they want to get connected with their pet? Mm-hmm. They can go to my website at www.brentatwater.com. They can um, find me that way or they can find me in our group, Animal Life After Death. Um, so, you know, I feel honored on every journey I get to go on because I feel that if you expand like you have done, you have opened so many minds with we don't die. If I can open one mind, then I've done my job on Earth. And so I feel that it's like a domino effect. You know, when the people read your book and you've saved their life, when we open their mind to touching and connecting with their pet, then they tell a friend and inch by inch. We don't die becomes a reality. That's true. It's already a reality, but not in their awareness. Right. And so I think that's what that's what's key is changing the awareness and letting them see, feel, and touch and smell and hug and their little spirit. And then you just can't, you can't, you can't deny it once you've ever done that. Right. Right. And times are changing. Years ago, people thought the world was flat. Just took some time. It's round. People never <laughs> thought this internet thing would catch on, be a reality. Look at it now. I mean, even when cell phones first came out, big clunky things, people would, had no idea, you know, what they become and then even you know the the technology we have now we take it for granted you know so but, what do you feel is your greatest mission with this show what do you if i'm talking to you on the other side you've already transitioned what are you going to tell me you wanted to accomplish i don't understand your question what do you mean okay. you've now become spirit oh i'm spirit Sandra, you're sandra spirit and I'm saying to you, okay, tell me, what did you want to change on earth while you were able to do so? What would you say? I would say I want mankind to know that death is an illusion, that we're souls here having a human experience, that their life matters, that they don't need to grieve for their loved ones, that they're still around. And I want them to go lead one hell of a life, go after their dreams, work through their fears, and make this life count. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's it, girlfriend. 
Well, I think that's good. And I, I think, think I think it's been a great episode. <laughs> and I think that's what pets, you know, and I want to add to that. And their pets are spirits too. Yes. So don't, don't discard them as just, they're fluffy. Boy, they are, they are angels. I've learned more about love and compassion and you know, that unconditional love we all talk about. Uh, mm-hmm. it was a long time before I, I got my heart broken as a young woman. And it was a long time before I let love back in. And it was Millie that I could love. Well, you know, did you know that eight to, to 10% of pets are guardian angels on earth? No. Yep. Uh, I have just, re- just recently, um, well, we've been doing this a long time, but the bottom line is a lot of times when people are at their worst emotionally, they think they're just going to die. They want to check out. They don't want to be on earth anymore. They're, um, the universe decides, and these are people who are usually leaders and make a difference in life. Mm -hmm. The universe will send a guardian angel down in a pet suit to heal their heart and reignite their pilot light for their soul's mission. Oh, that's beautiful. And there, what happens is the pet comes in. And this is, I'll say this real quick. And the pet comes in and it changes, it, it reignites the soul of the person and their heart light is not dim anymore. It's shining again. And then once they have that person in a stable being, then they exit their fursuit and they go into spirit form. And everybody says, you know, when I look in their eyes, I felt forever. When I hold them in my arms, I felt like that. I felt like that I was home. I felt a, con- a a love that I'd never felt before and I've never felt since. And I'm going, ooh, you got a guardian angel. And they say that when they have that experience, your guardian angel will then be with you for the rest of your life to help you with your mission on earth that you came to do. And so for you to think about it is you to think about Perhaps in my gut instinct is I'll bet you old Millie was one. And um, they come in at a time where you just really want to leave and your life is just crap. And you want to, your heart light's about gone out. It's just about quit. And they come in and they fill you up and you trust them and you love them and you hold a sense of them that's forever because what you're doing is really holding a piece of heaven. And then when they leave, it shatters and obliterates your soul because basically heaven has been taken out of your hands in the first suit you called Millie. And so now with Millie on the other side, she orchestrates and inspires you to go forward every day and write that book and go and be who you are and will always be with you to guide and direct you, sort of like Team Millie, Mm -hmm. so that when you get down and people cannot fulfill you, you can go back into your heart box of Millie's memories and she'll fill you back up again to give you the strength to keep going. And those animals that you think are an animal are really guardian angels in a pet suit. Yes. And I think that's one of the most coolest things. And when you watch them transition, you see the pet suit, they go over the death line and instead of turning into a white, bright sparkler form, they turn in to a great huge angel with the various colors and the colors tell you whether they work for Shamul, Raphael, the Archangel Michael, or who they work with. So when you cross them over the death line, if your pet suit happened to be a guardian angel, they would go and be all of the colors. The first time they did it, it scared me to death. And then I realized I said, Oh my God, your cat is a, 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 it's a guardian angel and it's these colors. And then we looked it up and we realized that the cat was working under the Archangel Michael and the, and Raphael. So if your pet is a guardian angel, when they cross the death line and you see in future energy, you see them in angelic form instead of pet form. Isn't that cool? Very cool. Very cool. Well, Brent, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being our guest today. Oh, well, I appreciate you allowing me to help heal the hearts of people with pets that think they're not around. <laughs> yeah, and I love it. I love it. And I'm really excited to go to YouTube and type in Brent Atwater and see you in those crazy different outfits and have, you know, just listen to some short words of inspiration and how to connect. Thank you for that. Thank you for the books that you've written. Thanks for your radio show. Thanks for helping and 
having available that your Facebook group with all those members because you know it's tough death of anybody or transitioning is tough but to be have a support community and to our listeners this might be your first episode we have a Facebook group too just type in we don't die listeners and we have over just about 3,000 people all like-minded interested in supporting you and helping you believe and just it's another good place to be uh, I want to remind our listeners that our home base website is we don't die radio dot com and all past two hundred and sixteen episodes now are there for you to listen to. Yep. You, it's awesome. You can join what I call the Insiders Club and I don't send you a lot of emails, as you know, um, but I send you a copy of my book, which is We Don't Die as well as a very healing audio called How to Survive Grief. And last, I would love nothing more than you guys to purchase my book on uh, (laughs) Amazon or the Audible version, the audio version. Just because I've made this announcement a few times, Brent, um, this show, I keep it commercial free and I pay for it myself to do that. And of course, we all know it's an expense. And if anybody wants to donate or purchase a copy of the audiobook, know it goes to a good cause that it keeps these episodes going. And of course, you don't have to, but you know. I like it. <laughs> so I'm going to close this episode just really thanking everyone for listening today. Uh, in the words of Brent, all we do uh, is we discard our earth suit and trans- transition over the death line. And now we become spirit energy. So your loved ones and your pets are still around. And we can be with them and connect to their energy. And I just, I love that. And to get more information about Brent, go to brentatwater.com. Or if you're listening to this on YouTube, simply scroll beneath the episode. And I have links to her website, her Facebook group, her YouTube show, her radio show, and her books. So very, very good. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain, and I've been your host on We Don't Die Radio. And I personally do believe that life is an education for the soul, and that your life here on Earth is important. So go make it a great day. I thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon. 